All right, so I have uh, the HoloLens 2 headset on. I've got my iPad here, and essentially I have the FabStation Steel application on my iPad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the workflow where these two are tied together. So I'm actually going to be controlling the alignment from my iPad, and sometimes you actually can't see the screen. Uh, the, uh, the brightness actually blurs out when it records. But uh, I just wanted you to see that I'm working in conjunction together with both the iPad and the Microsoft HoloLens headset that I have on here. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select a project. So I'm going to select my wood assembly test project, which is basically I made a 3D model in Tecla structures of my tabletop and like I'm acting like that's the web of a beam. And then I've got all these submaterial parts that I made out of wood that I'm attaching to that assembly. So I have my piece mark B2. I'm going to go ahead and select on that here. And then I'm going to press OK. Now there's a fab assist and an auto fab option. Now uh, the auto fab option is what I need to select in order to be able to uh, view this and align this with the Microsoft HoloLens um, in conjunction here with my tablet uh, to help me align it. So I'm going to go ahead and say auto fab. Here it then prompts me to link to the existing HoloLens device. So on the web portal, I actually um, I link the hardware that I might be using, which includes either the tablets, like my mobile tablet here, as well as the HoloLens headsets, especially if you're using multiple headsets and multiple tablets. I'm going to go ahead and select on this HoloLens here. And then what I also need to do is come in here and start up the FabStation application on the HoloLens. So here you can see the process of it uh, basically trying to find the tablet and then they're communicating together. There we go, it's now synchronizing. Okay, so the very first piece that I need to do is I actually need to come over here to the QR code marker. That gives me my initial placement of the model. And we can see it looks like I need to actually, uh, I need to flip that around, which I can do in a moment. But I'm just basically walking around. Then the next step, and I hope you can see it uh, when I bring the, the iPad closer to my face, there's a start and continue the mapping. And so basically the whole idea is that I'm gonna start over here looking at the table. So what I'm doing is I'm scanning the existing environment which is my raw piece of steel, which in this case is my table. And I'm just going you know, around that so that way the HoloLens can create the map of the real world and the physical world that I'm gonna actually be aligning my digital model to. Okay, once I've got that, I come up here and I press the finish button. And then essentially what's next is there's a controls option here. And so basically you'll see at the top of the iPad uh, kind of application, there's a few different controls. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the controls icon, which then launches a few different um, controls that we can actually start to work with. Now, essentially in the onboarding, when you work with the software, um, there is a specific process that kind of makes sense to uh, doing this. And so you do want to come towards the left end. And so an important piece to understand is that the origin point or coordinate system when you scan the marker is actually right here at the middle left end. And so when I rotate the hologram up or left and right um, as you start to do the alignment, just remember that everything is kind of being based off this uh, top center of material here. And then everything along the length um, sort of works with that, whether it's rotation or you know up and down or sliding it left and right, etc. So that's just an important piece to make sure that you understand. Now before I actually do any kind of refinement, I need to get this in the right spot. So I'm pressing this 90 degrees. All right, so there we go. Now I have rotated it. The alignment is trying to go back and take the current rotation and line it up with the table and the physical world that I had mapped. Okay, so even if I start here and I don't do any refined alignment, what I still think is pretty fantastic is that as a 
QC inspector, I can just see that, hey, all of the right parts are on this assembly. You know, even though they're not visually like 100% aligned right now and there's some fine tuning alignment that we need to do, I can for sure see that the right materials are in the right spot. The fitter and the layout guy put things up, uh, you know, the full scope of this assembly and there's nothing grossly wrong. You know, here the only thing I can see is that the shear tab was actually put the wrong way. So the holes are actually fit up on the table, which are represented by nails here, but they're in the wrong side and this shear tab should be flipped around and I can see that with the digital model and the holes. So those are the kind of quick, even if you didn't do a refined alignment type stuff that you can catch with this. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through the steps of actually trying to get this in a refined alignment here on the table. And so, the way that uh, you know the documentation sort of onboards you and tells you how to start is really you're starting from the left end of the assembly where you first scanned this. You did that mapping as you walked around the assembly and now we're doing the refined alignment. And so I'm gonna come in here to this corner and if you're actually looking um, at the left end of the assembly, looking down the length, essentially there's these controls here at the lower right hand corner where my right hand tends to wanna work and those are the starting points of what we wanna do. So the first thing we want to control is uh, kind of basically moving the model up and down. And I'm, ex I'm doing it at a, you know extreme level so you can kind of see the directional understanding of what I'm doing. And so it's got a pretty good feel. It's almost like a, a digital joystick. Like as I just kind of tap things or sort of hold it a little bit, it's got a feel for tolerance and how much it moves. Then there's a left and right. So see how it's moving left and right. And when I say left and right, again, the whole concept here is think that you're on the end of the assembly looking downward. So I've roughly got this right hand side like up to where I want. Then there's also a front and back. So front and back is kind of like, again, if you're down here on this assembly, it's coming front towards you or going back away from you as you change the slider. Okay, so I'm getting pretty close here to where I want. And then now what I probably need to do is I need to actually start uh, kind of rotating around this origin point to essentially get this to, to kind of, you know, tweak out the way that I want. So notice that there's this yaw right and left, which is essentially rotating the whole assembly left or right. So again, I'll let you look at that. Hopefully it comes across. If not, I will make a screenshot so you can kind of see what I was doing here. But now we're just kind of moving it. And this is the real work. Like, I, I want you to see what I'm actually doing here because this is what you, you would do. And, and once you've done this a few times, you get the mechanics of it. It starts to become muscle memory and then natural experience. But it's really important to sort of fundamentally understand what you're doing with the alignment and all of these different controls. But it looks pretty good. Now, here's one other really important thing about this software um, is there's actually some visibility controls. So if I go to visuals, there's the ability to turn parts on and off, but there's also this ability to turn on this outline mode. And depending on what mode you're in um, in this process, whether you're doing a layout or you're doing QC, or if you're doing just a preliminary visualization of what you're gonna build, you'll control these uh, visibility settings. So when I first start out, if I'm actually a layout guy and I want to just I have a complex assembly, I just want to get an idea of what it is I'm supposed to be attaching and what the final assembly will look like, then having this fully rendered uh, solids mode where you can actually see the shades of the parts is pretty valuable. As I get kind of more into um, actually doing QC um, or layout, really the outline mode becomes more and more important here. And as I get over the objects, I'm looking to see that the pieces um, are going to match up to the line work and everything that I see. So it looks like I uh, didn't fit this one correctly. Everything else looks pretty close. As I start to zoom in, you'll see that it stabilizes and the placement is pretty darn good. I mean, that, that honestly is within a sixteenth or so, like as I move around and I get aligned with the parts, I'm pretty darn close and I kind of, you know, just quickly whipped up this one inch offset here on the shear tab. This one looks pretty good except for I had it the wrong direction. Looks like I might be a little, maybe an eighth off or something there. But it kind of 
depends on where I'm in. When you're actually doing this, really the best process when you're kind of going along the beam is to really look on at this as straight on as possible. And the reason why I've got these playing cards here is because they act as features uh, so the HoloLens can recognize and have something that, has, that is of contrast um, on this table in order to identify where it's actually at. So why is that important and why, why do you need that? Well, if you think of a 30 foot long beam, right, um, that's a pretty good distance away from that origin. And there's not a lot of change potentially as you walk along that beam. So as you're walking from one place to another, about every three or four feet, you really need to have some so sort of feature that kind of is unique. So that way the HoloLens can kind of track where you're at as you're going along the assembly and then tie back to that origin and, and show things correctly. Now, that's why I sort of have the cards randomly. Now, you don't want these to move. You want them to be in a static spot. So in some cases, you'll put magnets like and, you know, just get a special set of cards or or, you know, something that basically has a magnetic front. It'll stick to the steel and not move. So that's the only reason why I have these playing cards in here. I promise we weren't playing poker at the table before we did this demonstration. But but there is a purpose to that. And it's to give contrast. And another thing is like depending on how your shop floor looks, if it's colored and its texture somewhat looks the same as a steel beam and you're looking down on it, the hollow ends might have a problem with contrast between seeing your steel beam versus the background on the floor. So that's why those cards are handy. But in an actual application, as I'm moving along the beam, usually I'll get there and then I'm looking straight on it, um, you know, kind of dead on and then I'll see a pretty good solid perfect alignment. And then this one here, I can just see I straight up, I straight up didn't measure this right. And this is like almost an inch off. Okay, so now I actually want to tell you um, about a real situation that just happened and this happens in real life. So I had to go get the shop drawing because I wanted to go see what the heck I did here. And so what I did is I had the hollow lens on and you know, I lifted the visor and I just put it on the table and I walked away from it because I had to go get the drawing and look at something else. And here again is what's cool too is that I came back, put the hollow lens on and um, you'll see that the environment is still mapped. Now, like there are some cases where that's not the not true and like things will fly all over this place when you put the headset down or take it off or or kind of move things around and here I'm pretty amazed that the alignment is is still pretty close to exactly where I was at before it looks like I see a little bit of drift but for the most part it's here and that's pretty critical when you're just in a production working environment you don't want to have to be kind of constantly manipulating this thing and adjusting it now let's see what the problem is well look at that I'm a steel detailer and I hope you can see the drawing I, uh, you know, when I modeled this, I thought everything was from the top and that's actually the far side where I'm not fitting from. And I did not put this uh, dimension in here. So bad detailer. So you know what I did is I was following the one foot four I did on all the other pieces and that's kind of why I have the problem. So um, essentially, let me come in here. Let's just measure what it is that I actually put on the table. So yeah, this thing clearly got moved. It's at nine and a half. That's not right. So I'm just gonna, let's test this out. I'm just going to move this based on what I can see and see if I'm pretty close within the fit up lines. All right. I know that this needs to be 11 inches. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That, that is pretty awesome. There I am right at the 11 inches. My tape is right on it. That's, that's pretty darn good. So, you know, I can tweak this a little bit. looks like I've got it skewed. Let's just see if that skew is, is really a problem. Looks like I'm getting a little bit out of sync here, but let's see. Oh, lost the iPad. That's why you're seeing that. So 16 inches from the left side. That's pretty good. So again, what, what is happening here? Well, this is the uh, traditional HoloLens uh, based interface for alignment and things like that, which I'm not using. It is a little bit easier to use with the iPad. And this just popped up because it lost connection with the iPad. So that's why you're seeing that here. But check this out. I actually just kind of did an adjustment and, and fit this up based on what I was seeing. And I was, I was within the 16th of an inch on the left running dimension, as well as from the bottom up. That's, that's pretty cool. So not only just for QC inspection afterwards or a conceptual visualization, I actually moved a piece and laid it out and it matched the dimensions on my drawing and what I taped out. Pretty cool. So I know that this is in a uh, basically a residential house environment here and this thing is not 30 feet long so it would be much better to see and demonstrate in a live shop environment. But this is still pretty good. Of, 
of all the stuff that I've sort of researched and investigated uh, so far, um, this really is a software that seems very geared towards, uh, you know, manufacturing and steel fabrication and really, um, you know, kind of narrowing in on how to place parts and get them to that accuracy level and that having that stability of alignment um, on the assembly as you move back and forth. Um, so, so far, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by what I see here and uh, it's definitely worth checking out and uh, you know, trying to take this to the next level and, and using it out in the actual shop floor. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.